Uh, why do they target inflation? And then how do they actually conduct monetary policy? What do they do? Then I'm going to split this into a part two to keep things short and sweet. And we'll look at the transmission mechanism. So how changing the cash rate changes interest rates and how that changes the inflation rate and the economic situation. So this sums it up here. To achieve an inflation rate of 2 to 3% on average over time is the goal of monetary policy, to keep inflation between these two targets. Not all the time, but on average over time in the longer run. And you'll see they'll try and keep those spikes within there. So it's essentially smoothing out uh, inflation and not letting it spike too high or spike too low. And of course, credit to the RBA for sources such as this one from their um, slides and presentations and the RBA website. There's heaps of information there if you want to keep going further. Uh, and also remember you can put on captions along the bottom there if you want to help follow this along. And feel free to pause and slow down and rewind and speed up. So firstly, let's look at the goals of the RBA. The first is stability of the currency, which is price stability, stable prices, stable inflation. Uh, and it also refers to the exchange rate. But we're focusing on inflation with monetary policy. What this also symbolizes here is that if they look after stability of the currency, goal number one it helps contribute to goal number two, the maintenance of full employment, which remembering isn't actually zero unemployment, but uh, as full employment as we can hold. Uh, and we can talk about that another time in the Nauru. If they also then can achieve that goal, that's going to help contribute to economic prosperity of welfare uh, and welfare. So people have jobs, they've got money to spend, uh, the given that money to the businesses and money's flowing through that uh, circular flow of income. This is obviously a big broad goal. So they are not themselves fully in charge of this. They can contribute to it through monetary policy and they work in conjunction alongside the treasury conducting, conducting fiscal policy to help achieve these goals. So number one, number two, number three, in that order, need to remember them and that that leads to that, which leads to that. So in that order. Okay, this is a quick overview of monetary policy with our new governor there, Philip Lowe. So firstly, they conduct monetary policy, policy to achieve their three goals. They do it by keeping the inflation between 2 to 3% on average. The tool they got in the toolbox to manage inflation is the cash rate. That's what they've got. They can't just grab a... Um, button and change to 2 to 3% of inflation. They can't just turn a knob or anything like that. They've got the cash rate and we'll look at how they use that to cause a ripple or a chain of events through the interest rates. So they meet 11 times a year on the first Tuesday of the month to decide what the cash rate should be. It's really exciting. They get together and have a meeting and see what they're going to do and they release the minutes of the meeting and uh, their, their statement on monetary policy as well. So they're very clear about what they're doing and the current situation, why they're trying to, why they're, you know, doing, making their change with their cash rate if they do do it. So they could increase it by 0.25%, decrease it by 2.5% or leave it the same. Usually they change it by 0.25% unless there's an extreme situation like uh, during the GFC where they had to cut it by a full percentage point a few times, so in a big, big hit like that, but that's obviously out of the ordinary. Okay, so the cash rate has a strong influence over un other interest rates, that's why they use it. They change the cash rate, which changes the bank's general uh, interest rates, such as lending and deposit rates that you would use for uh, a home loan or to borrow money or in your deposit bank account, for example. So a reduction in the cash rate typically stimulates spending and inflation, means increases spending inflation, while an increase in the cash rate does the opposite, typically dampens spending and inflation. So dampen meaning reducing. So we've also got to be across different terms like this that you'll find 
from the RBA or in economic doc documents like stimulates, um, dampens, uh, easing monetary policy, contractionary, accommodative, all these different terms they use to essentially say the same thing sometimes. We need to know that terminology and use it ourselves. So if inflation is likely to be too high for too long, the board will typically increase the cash rate to bring inflation back to the target. If inflation is likely to remain too low, the cash rate would typically be lowered because they could reduce the cash rate to increase inflation and then that might then start to get too high, then they can uh, increase the cash rate to start to bring inflation back down and keep going back and forth. So why target the inflation rate? Well, what else could they target? They could target GDP growth or uh, the unemployment rate or something like that. But they've found that inflation rate's the best general overall uh, rate to target and to kind of uh, keep an eye on the overall economic situation. So it acts as an anchor for future expectations. We can expect it to stay between 2 to 3%. We can trust them. They've done a pretty good job of it so far, as we can see since they introduced the target in the early 90s. I've done a pretty good job of keeping it steady. You see a little bit of a spike there, but on average, it's been between 2 to 3%. Obviously, much better since before they were targeting it, seeing some huge spikes and some big changes in inflation before they set uh, it as a target. So it gives a certainty for our decision-making for the future. Whether you're a business or a consumer, you want to buy a house or take a loan and expand your business, you want to make big decisions, you can do that with some more certainty. So it's going to help you feel more comfortable about spending money. We want to make it easy for people to spend money and also transparency because we know what they're doing. They explain all over their website what they're doing and why so we can have some trust in them um, to keep inflation and keep prices stable. So how does it actually implement monetary policy through domestic market operations or DMOs. So this shows us here, we can show it on a demand and supply uh, graph, the actual demand and supply for liquidity here instead of quantity, uh, liquidity in the cash market. And on the other side, instead of price, we've got the target rate or the cash rate, their interest rate. So they don't keep it exactly at the target cash rate. They try and keep it as close as they can. So for example, at the moment it's 1.5%. They'll keep it between plus or minus 25 uh, basis points is the BPS there. So they'll keep it plus or minus 25 basis points and keep it as close as possible, which they've done a better job of as they go along. And so uh, where demand and supply hits an equilibrium is going to be our target rate. If demand for liquidity increased in the cash market, they could increase the supply to keep it between, uh, keep it close to that target rate instead of that uh, equilibrium point rising up and driving up the cash rate, they can increase the supply to keep things steady. Okay, so what do they actually do? They manip manipulate the demand and supply for overnight funds in the short-term money market. They buy and sell Commonwealth government securities, which are bonds, to the banks. The banks maintain an exchange settlement account with the RBA to participate in the check and payment processing system. So a bank, for example, ANZ, it wants to be in the payment processing system, so it has to keep an ESA or exchange settlement account with the RBA. The RBA kind of acts like the bank to the banks and, uh, and also the government. But the uh, RBA then can sell or buy com Commonwealth government securities uh, to those banks. So, and these are also CGSs. So we've got to remember these plenty of acronyms here. So if they want to increase the target cash rate, if they want to drive the cash rate up, they will sell securities to the banks to reduce their liquid funds. And by doing so, manipulate the interest rate in the short-term money market. So 
to increase the target cash rate, they'll sell securities. If they want to lower the cash rate, the RBA will buy securities, increasing the excess funds to be placed as supply to the short-term money market. And you can see here that they've gotten better at it over time. The red line is the cash rate target, the black is the actual cash rate. They've gotten better at keeping those two lines together, so keeping the actual cash rate at the target. Also because the banks have become more confident in uh, how the RBA does it as well. And you can see that there's times where they've keeping, kept the cash rate at the exact same amount for, for several months at a time, and it usually moves in small steps up and down, unless there's something extreme like wonder what happened here 2008, where there was some massive drops from seven to six, from five to just above four, and so on, and then it was able to come back up quickly again, and then it's kind of fallen off. So to lower the cash rate, the RBA would buy securities, increasing the excess funds. And this is what's going to actually change interest rates. Okay, so if it's tightening or contractionary monetary policy, we can flowchart what happens to actually, in the end, influence economic activity. This is what we'll look at in more detail when we look at the actual transmission mechanism. But if they want to tighten monetary policy, if they want to, which is uh, going to reduce economic activity, for example, uh, no, sorry, let's just stick with this slide. Uh, so say they want to reduce economic activity. GDP growth's too high, inflation's too high, the economy's overheating, prices are rising. Might sound really good, but we've got to slow down that inflation. So they'll sell government securities, or the CGSs, uh, to the banks. This means there'll be a shortage of borrowable funds. This will drive up the cash rate. If there's a shortage, uh, this will, if they, the cash rate increases, this is going to get passed on to the banks. And this is what I said, we'll look at in more detail, how the cash rate then influences market interest rates. This is going to increase debt repayments for consumers and businesses. If interest rates goes up, your mortgage repayments have just increased. Uh, your business loan that you've taken out, the repayments have just increased you've got less money to spend for other things. You've got to put more of your money towards your, your loans and you're going to have less disposable income after that. So it's going to reduce your consumption and investment and it's going to reduce economic activity. It also has a bit of a psychological effect when it gets announced in the news that they are uh, implementing contractionary monetary policy. We know they're trying to slow things down uh, and people will reduce their consumption. So then loosening or expansionary monetary policy is just going to be vice versa. If they want to increase economic activity like they are aiming to do at the moment, they're going to keep the cash rate low and keep interest rates low. So the RBA will buy government securities. Uh, they will mean there's going to be an excess of borrowable funds. For those banks, it's going to reduce the cash rate, which is going to reduce market interest rates as the banks pass on those reduced interest rates. Then that means there's going to be lower debt repayments for consumers and businesses. New borrowers find it's easier to borrow money because there's low interest rates. You're more inclined to borrow money and less inclined to save it because you're not going to make as much money uh, and earn as much interest on your like deposit account. So you're more likely to spend money, borrow money. So we're going to increase consumption and investment. So increase marginal propensity to consume as opposed to propensity to save. And that's going to increase economic activity. So next video, part two, we'll take a look at this. How does the cash rate actually influence the economy and change interest rates?